how, how long do we have till, we till have you want to put me on? Yeah, we're going to go live in about a minute. In a minute? Yeah. Okay. Uh, here, let me shoot. You were better when you were sitting up against the wall. Uh, no, that's bad. I'm here, let me try something. How about out here? Uh, no. Uh, you were, you were better when you were up against the wall. All right, well, then I'm just going to go back and sit down. Maybe it'll work. Yeah, I guess I have to just that's sit down. That's good. Yeah, more. that's very good. Uh, it's much better where you are. Okay. Uh, is there any way you can give me like another extra minute? Because I'm worried that I'm going to run out of like data if I don't put a card on here. Well, okay. So people on Facebook can see you do this now. <laughs> so let's just let me just welcome them and you take care of your technology. So, hi everyone. Uh, okay. This okay. This is what the app is going on in Latin America, Code Pink's weekly uh, webinar, 20 minutes of hot news from Latin America. We apologize for the technical difficulties today. We've had issues on both sides of the uh, um, technological loop this morning, so we're about 30 minutes late, and I hope some of you are still with us. Um, and we will be, be recording this webinar and posting it on YouTube and um, Facebook. So um, today we have Wyatt Reed reporting live from La Paz, Bolivia. Wyatt is um, on assignment with the Gray Zone Project. And we are very fortunate to have 20 minutes of his time today to share with you what he has seen um, since his arrival in La Paz shortly after uh, the coup of Sunday, November 10. And um, as a journalist, where he's gonna share with us a little bit of what he's seen on the ground, but also what's happening with media coverage in and out of Bolivia and, uh, and the state of, uh, and the condition that journalism, journalists are working under right now. So we'll talk with Wyatt uh, for about 20 minutes and then um, we'll take 10 minutes of Q&A if um, any of you have additional questions um, for him. So welcome, Wyatt. So happy to have you here. And I so thank you for your patience with the technology this afternoon. Thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure to be here. I really appreciate it. So you're really bad at the moment again. Can you, you were really good when you were sitting up against the wall. Can you hear me, Terry? Yeah, we can hear you. It's, it's garbled a little. Oh, uh, no. Okay, okay well, I'm, I'm getting you a little bit better now. I that's think much better. Somebody else just uh, jumping into the bed. It's much better. Uh, so let, let me know, uh, where should I start? Why don't you start but, uh, with um, why you're, how you got there and when you arrived and let us give us a quick overview of what you've witnessed. And then let's talk about the state of the media coverage. Right, um, yeah. And, and then what um, journalists on the ground are experiencing. Does that sound like a fair conversation? Right. Yep, yep, yep. So I have been here about two weeks now. Um, and I just got into Santa Cruz, uh, then in La Paz and, and El Alto for the majority of my time here. Um, so I've seen a lot. Uh, I've seen things really um, shift from uh, a much more sort of militarized, uh, militant, um, ongoing sort of, of really massacres is, is the only way that to characterize them to uh, now we're at the point where, where this new coup government has more or less achieved, um, you know, what they call pacification. So this uh, essentially looks like a very sort of uneasy piece, right? Uh, we have um, producing, right? We have uh, gas coming out of this thing at the gas plant, you know, where they massacred so many people to clear that out. Uh, so things are in many ways looking normal, but uh, beneath 
beneath the surface, um, it's very much a, a scary place to be, especially for those who are uh, trying to either pose this to or to sort of uh, expose the queue. Um, so in that sense, uh, I, I, I guess, you know, right now, um, I haven't seen a whole lot of, of Santa Cruz. Uh, the, you know, I've only been here for a few hours, but what I have seen is uh, is a, a march of people here who are were, um, are being forced to sort of uh, pay for this uh, huge increase in energy consumption that occurred as you know this three week period of of sort of um, police repression against you know these massive protests that occurred uh, many people. We just we just lost you. You know, nothing to do with this, and so they stayed inside their houses, and it was a, a extremely. You, can you hear me? Yeah, you're very. We we are very garbled at the moment. Terry. Yeah, you're. Hello. Still there? Yeah, we're here. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I was trying to explain. Um, Today, there was a big protest. Yeah, we just lost you again. Hello? Okay, everyone, give us a few minutes for Wyatt to reconnect. All right. Oh, good. Okay. Are you there? <laughs> So we la well, the last thing I heard was the police repression over the over the gas. Hello. Okay. Let me let me try to start over again. Does okay. You hear this? We can hear you. You're very. Um, start again. So I uh, arrived in Santa Cruz today, and there's a big uh, protest against these police inside during the police repressions uh, against, you know, anti-coup protesters. Um, it's been some of the, the hottest weeks of the year so far here in Santa Cruz. So naturally, this led to a massive increase in electricity consumption. Um, and so people are seeing their electrical uh, bills jump up three times in many cases. Um, and, you know, that's really untenable for a lot of working class people. And what's kind of interesting is around this time last year, there was an, a series of protests. So we've lost you again. Our organization is civic. The okay. There, that's good. Stay right where you are. <laughs> I'm trying not to move at all. Don't move. That's uh, I can hear you. So. Uh, uh, so same thing happened last year, right? With the under the Morales government, there was an increase in electrical use and an increase in uh, thing that about that was those bills a thousand, I think, you know, uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, so that really only affected business owners, you know. So the people who came out to protest that last year were the civic committees of Santa Cruz. And that's really where where Camacho, where Fernando Camacho, uh, cut his teeth as the civic committee here. In Santa Cruz. Um, and I'm hoping y'all are still able to hear me. Uh, but I think that sort of uh, shows you kind of the difference between these two governments and their uh, their rationales for doing things and their justifications, and also um, really who they favor and who they. Uh, who they do not, who they disadvantage. Um, so 
in that sense, you know, uh, only having been here for a few hours in Santa Cruz, uh, I think I'm getting a, a, a clearer picture of, of this new government and, and what it means for uh, working people here. Um, so let me ask you something. Um, yesterday, there was an article published in The Hill here in DC. And it was, uh, I don't, not sure if you had a chance to see it there, but it basically, um, <laughs> basically criminalized the Morales government and um, denied that a that a, a coup actually took place on November 10. And this is, we're seeing more and more of that narrative here in the States is that uh, typical of what's coming out of Bolivia now? How is the, how are you seeing the, the media managed and or produced? Because what you're sharing with us right now, we are really not reading or seeing here in the U.S. Well, yeah, I mean, it's funny because, you know, for I think maybe the first time in recorded history, the people in the U.S. actually have a slightly clearer picture of what's happening in Bolivia than the Bolivians do, right? Uh, because here there's just absolutely no no alternative voices allowed on the air at all. So if anybody wants to find out what's really happening, they have to go to social media uh, because the only channels that are allowed on the air are these, um, you know, essentially state propaganda at this point, you know, any any single channel that would have questioned what's happening has been very much purged of dissenting voices. Um, and, you know, those who, you know, might otherwise, put, uh, you know, not go along with this have, have been bought off. Uh, so really there's, and, and well, that's not even to mention, right, Telester and RT, the sort of last two international channels that you would be able to get on cable, those are gone as well. So even if you have, you know, these cable package, whatever, um, you just, you can't find a single bit of information that isn't more or less pro-coup propaganda. Um, so yes, uh, obviously, you know, the, uh, the narrative in the United States is extremely wrong, uh, but somehow here it's even wronger. Um, and <laughs> I think, uh, you know, at least I think there are a few outlets who are willing to publish, you know, these, uh, reports by like, for, for example, the Center for Economic Policy and Research uh and you know the uh similar academics including you know a uh a very highly regarded statistician from cambridge i believe uh, there was a big open letter published just the other day uh by a lot of well-regarded academics essentially you know demanding that uh the oas retract Mark Weisbrod, the director of Seabird, uh, today, I believe, offered a uh, $500 reward for anybody who would ask these questions, uh, you know, of, of the OAS, sort of um, wanting to, <laughs> demanding to know, you know, where, uh, how exactly they can justify um, continuing to, to keep up this charade uh, that there was somehow some, you know, vast inexplicable discrepancy between the uh, later poll results and the final ones. Um, so yeah, in, in that sense, you know, obviously in the United States, um, it's hard to find out what's going on in Bolivia. But if if you're in Bolivia, really, the only way to find out is 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 going yourself, um, or, you know, having access to these alternative media channels, you know, La Resistencia Bolivia, um, you know, funnily enough, it's there's a meme page on Facebook called Suchel that's, you know, it's essentially one of the main sources of, of how people are finding out about things. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the level that we're at. So we have a couple I want to just mention since um, you're talking about alternative media, we should remind the audience that you are on the ground in Santa Cruz, Bolivia now. Um, on assignment with the Grayson Project, 
and the audience can check grayzone.com for your work. And then also, I want to remind listeners that at codepink.org, we have a Bolivia news page, codepink.org slash Bolivia news. So those are two sources um, for all of you to reference in addition to what you're... And so, Wyatt, can you tell us a little bit, we, we, some of the things that I have personally read is that there's been some physical um, threats to journalists um, as well as just blacking out media sources. Have, have you seen or heard of any um, journalists who have been physically threatened and their harm because of their reporting? Yeah, I mean, also, of course. So I, uh, you know, have friends who work with, uh, you know, what I'm really is one of the last remaining voices uh, that's telling the other side of the story called La Resistencia Bolivia. Uh, and one of them was uh, arrested um, and held for 24 hours and in a location where you know, he was not allowed to, uh, or rather his friends, uh, they refused to tell them where he was. Uh, they said that he wasn't there and they made him sign this, you know, absurd document saying that he wouldn't participate in social media, which is, you know, not only ridiculous, but also illegal even under Bolivian law. Uh, so we're really facing this situation where, um, you know, if you're facing uh, repression from the state that is arbitrary and um, is itself in many ways criminal, and then you're you're facing repression from these sort of fascist paramilitaries, these civic minis, these groups that uh, uh, are sort of doing the dirty work of the coup, um, and they really don't have any rules at all because you know as as other colleagues from La Resistencia Bolivia would tell me, they uh, watched um, someone who attempted to fail, right? And, and their sort of uh, youth vanguards um, as they as they took to the streets wearing these, you know, helmets and gas masks and massive shields and waving batons and, um, you know, she's filming them and, and they start screaming her, surrounding her, uh, blowing whistles in her ears, uh, sort of tactics that are familiar to people who have dealt with the right wing uh, Latin American, quote unquote, diaspora before. Uh, but uh, and then they immediately, they, you know, called for a cab and then they shut left her inside this vehicle um, and she disappeared and she's gone, you know, and nobody has, died. maybe she's not, it's, if she is dead, then it's certainly not anything that's going to be investigated by the police. Uh, so it really is um, a, a terrifying moment for, um, for leftists who are uh, vocal about their opposition and who refuse to uh, stay silent. So, wow, if this is, um, you know, we're just not seeing, hearing about this in, in the mainstream U.S. media, as you know. So how, for you personally, do you have any personal stories you can share with us? Um, have you found yourself relatively safe in your reporting? Or um, has it been a challenge for you as well? Clearly, you haven't been disappeared yet, and we hope to God that that's not going to... Uh, be an, be an issue. I mean, you've been there for two weeks now, correct? And you've been able to remain relatively safe. Um, I want to ask you something. You mentioned something. You mentioned the word, the, uh, the government's arbitrary uh, behavior, and this is the interim and or coup government, as uh, most of us would say, interim government, as the U.S. State Department would refer to it. The, um, the coup government was to, I believe, constitutionally call for elections within 90 days of um, declaring itself the government. And my understanding that's now been pushed back till sometime in April. That, is that correct? Do you have any, um, any knowledge as to what's happening with 
impending elections? Well, that's um, it's definitely a real possibility. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, that hasn't been formalized in any way yet. Um, and as far as I'm aware, uh, at least the presumption right now is that they're going to be held on January 22nd. So obviously, as you, as you say, it's, um, it's many people are sort of banking on them being moved back. Um, and the government is constantly sort of pro providing this rationale in terms of this supposed you know, terrorism and sedition. These are the big two words they use all the time um, about anybody who's doing anything that's perceived as going against the grain. Uh, you know, very easily charged with sedition or charged with terrorism. Uh, so, as the election stands, I mean, it, the the Moss Party is is planning on uh, on participating to the best of their ability. They're holding a a Congress as we, which candidates they're going to field in these quote unquote elections. Um, in terms of whether or not they're to be trusted, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I certainly wouldn't, um, especially, you know, without an extremely, extraordinarily robust international observation system that, you know, includes uh, nations that are in friendly relations with the Morales government, not just those which sought to overthrow it. So international organizations, with the exception of the OAS, I think you and I would right. argue they should not that that and that body should not participate on any level at this point. Right, because obviously at this point the OAS main main participation in Bolivia has been uh, as a as a cheerleader of the coup, as an instigator of the coup. Uh, their quote unquote announcement process was really the main justification uh, in a lot of ways for the coup, uh, both internally and external. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't trust the OAS any farther than I could throw them, and I don't think it would throw Luis Salmon or Terrible Park. So Wyatt, we are at our 20 minutes of hot news, and I so thank you for your patience with the technology um, issues today. And is there anything you'd like to um, add before we sign off? Anything that is of special? Well, um, yeah, really just uh, I wanted to take a minute to, to thank you all with Code Chain and thank everybody for tuning in. Um, remind people uh, to keep checking back with, with Code Pink and with Grayzone. I've got a lot of uh, video material that I'm hoping to push out, you know, as soon as possible through both these outlets. Um, and, you know, really, we're the only ones telling the story right now, right? There's there's not a whole lot of people on the ground from uh, any kind of international media. Uh, and so, you know, I think it's, it's, it's up to us to be able to tell the stories for these people uh, to a wider audience, because uh, they're having trouble telling them even to each other. Uh, so I want to thank you again so much for, uh, you know, all, all the help uh, that I've got from Code Pink, and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll get to talk again soon. Okay, thank you so much. Be safe, and let's definitely have you come back and talk with us again. Great, yeah, let's, we'll do it again, and I'll, uh, I'll make sure we... I've worked out the, the kinks. Well, uh, it's okay. Know, We're just events. happy to have you with us. And we know that you're traveling in places where the technology um, isn't always the best. And we had some issues on our end as well today. Also, so I just want to remind the audience that you can um, find Wyatt's work at the Gray Zone. He is on assignment with the Gray Zone project right now in Bolivia. And so look for his work at grayzone.com and also um, visit codepink.org slash Bolivia News. We'll be sharing our own work as well as Wyatt's contributions as well. And please join us next Wednesday, December 11th at 12 p.m. Eastern for another 20 minutes of hot news um, from Latin America. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Wyatt. So appreciate it. Be safe. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, Take care. Uh, bye. Bye-bye.
Sure. Exactly. 